Hello besties and welcome back to Platform and to another installment of Penguin Explorer, the video series where I take a mini deep dive into some cool literary, academic or just overall bookish topics. Today's exploration delves into an entire universe of books, all written by one author specifically and for the last Penguin Exploration of this year I really wanted to take a deep dive into this particular author because I literally just finished one of their like major series and I really wanted to talk about it with you because Penguin actually published them. And so for today's exploration we're going to be looking at the Ryordanverse, aka the mythological books of Rick Riordan. In my opinion, the Ryordanverse has aged perfectly since its first novel was published in 2005, being Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. And it remains a wonderful gift or suggestion to anyone that wants to get into fantasy reading, but doesn't necessarily want to get into that high fantasy yet. It's a perfect urban fantasy for anyone of any age. The books of Rick Riordan, also called the Ryanverse, is coined because out of the three mythologies that Rick Riordan mainly writes about, they're all interlinked together in the same universe, sometimes having crossover stories where they share particular journeys or even characters. Contained within these are the following. The Camp Half-Blood Chronicles, which comprises of three five-book series so far. The first one being Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Then it's followed by the Heroes of Olympus. And then more recently, Rick Riordan completed the third series in the Camp Half-Blood Chronicles calls The Trials of Apollo. These followed the numerous adventures of children from Camp Half-Blood, also known as demigods, which is very exciting because they are actually half god, half human. One of their parents comes from Greek mythology, and this is definitely Rick Ryden's most popular series, and this focuses more on the Greek and sometimes Roman mythology as well. And these were his very first entries into the Ryonverse. We then also have The King Chronicles, which was Rick Ryden's first series outside of Greek and Roman mythology. This series follows Carter and Sadie Kane as they make numerous interactions with Egyptian mythology after their father accidentally summons a long dead Egyptian god. It was really exciting for me to read this series because it was amazing to see how Rick Ryden handled another mythology apart from the Greek and Roman. And finally, Magnus Chase and the gods of Asgard following the cousin of Annabeth Chase who is one of the kids who goes to Camp Half-Blood. This series follows Magnus Chase who makes his interactions with Norse mythology who finds out things aren't entirely as they seem after his death. Death. When asked about what inspired him to write his initial series, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Rick Ryden notes that, My son Haley asked me to tell him some bedtime stories about the Greek gods and heroes. I had taught Greek myths for many years at a middle school level, so I was glad to comply. When I ran out of myths, he was disappointed and asked me if I could make up something new with the same characters. And so, that is basically how Percy Jackson was born. <laughs> Ryden's books have met with much success, and Percy Jackson is actually currently being made for TV over at Disney+. Plus whilst the Kane Chronicles are also being made into a film over on Netflix. Plus, the Camp Half-Blood fanbase is super popular and active, so even if you just pick up the series and start it today, I have no doubt within my mind you'll be able to find some bookish friends to discuss it with because ev everyone in the Camp Half-Blood community is just super awesome. But now that we've covered the basics of Rick Ryden's main series, what about taking a look at the main thing that Rick Ryden is inspired by? As I mentioned earlier, Rick Ryden integrates three main mythologies throughout all of the series that he's written so far. And throughout these books, he does it super well, and it's kind of like you're being taught the mythologies as you're reading it. Which is why I think him being like a middle school teacher works so well, because it's kind of like he's able to both make it a fun adventure and also interweave a bit of education in there as well. I found myself learning so much more about the mythologies than I originally knew, and so it was really interesting to kind of get that experience. When considering the adaptation of myth into his his fiction, Rick Ryden noted that mythology has been around for thousands of years and it was retold over and over again, the details changing as different storytellers brought the myths to different cities. There are so many different versions of each myth. You may have read one version from a mythology book, but that doesn't mean that it's the right version or the only version. I tend to pick the version I like best and the one that fits best. And so we can clearly see that sometimes people may disagree with the certain types of mythological representation that Rick Ryden has in his books, however it's only one version of the myth, it's only one interpretation. Like we see so many different ways that Greek and Roman and Egyptian and Norse myth has been adapted and transformed into many different pieces of fiction. We see this in Lord of the Rings being a kind of different adaptation of Norse mythology. It is timeless and it, like the way you can transform something is limitless and it is amazing. And so we see in the Camp Half-Blood Chronicles, Ryoden chooses to focus on the Olympians, which are a set of 12 gods led by Zeus who engaged in a 10-year-long 
long war against the Titans in order to overthrow them and become the new leading gods of Olympus. In the modern day Percy Jackson universe though, these gods basically start to intermingle more with mortals and have children with them, hence how we get these demigod characters that we see throughout this series. Such is the case of Percy Jackson who is the son of Actually, I'm not going to spoil that for you. You should probably read the series to find out. In The Cain Chronicles, Ryujin chooses to focus on Egyptian mythology, so we get to meet certain Egyptian gods such as Set, Anubis, and so on and so forth. However, he also integrates the language of the Egyptians, the hieroglyphs, as a way of a magical language, which the Cain children use in order to make certain things happen, which really calls back to that kind of old saying that words are power, because words are literally power in this series. I just find that it's such an interesting take with that, but also the way that Ryordan chooses to represent certain things within this series, I find it to be very interesting as well. Finally, Magnus chasing the gods of Asgard comes from Norse mythology, and he again interacts with the gods of Asgard, such as Freya, Loki, Thor, Odin, Heimdall, so on and so forth. You may recognize some of the names from like the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Thor, Loki, Odin, etc. However, like the gods that you see in here don't look like Tom Hiddleston, so I don't think you'll get a specific exact representation from the Marvel Cinematic Universe to this. But we do also get to see other parts of Norse mythology such as Valhalla, the place where heroes who have died in combat go, and the Valkyrie, people who transport those heroes to Valhalla. We also get to see some objects from Norse mythology such as Menonia, which is Thor's hammer, and it's just a very exciting series overall because I feel like the way that Rick Ryden interpreted Magnus Chase's character and the way that like the story goes off, it's, it's, it's amazing. This series also focuses on the coming of Ragnarok, which is cited in Norse mythology as a series of events which will basically submerge the world in water and then out of that a new world will be reborn. So it'll basically mean most people will die. Yeah. So basically like an apocalypse event. <laughs> but now that we've kind of covered like those mythologies as well, hopefully you would have been kind of convinced that the Ryan verse is something that you should pick up. However, if you haven't yet, the Ryanverse is just such an expansive and amazing series, and things are being added to it all the time. I mean, recently, a Nico D'Angelo novel was announced, which, if you don't know who Nico D'Angelo is, you will come to love him in his first introduction in the Camp Half-Blood Chronicles. He is basically, like, everyone's son. He is adorable and amazing. I think he is just an incredible character. It is a series that I highly recommend to anyone who wants to get into any form of fantasy. The way that Rick Ryden writes these characters is so authentic to the ages he is trying to represent. I believe that's kind of because he has this middle school teacher background, so he's used to listening to children, he's used to seeing their different mannerisms and attitudes, and so he's perfectly able to transport that onto the page. And it's just amazing to see these kids act like kids and make decisions that are accurate to their age. And this series, just the character choices and decisions and the way that Rick Ryden handles certain topics, sometimes deeper topics, it's good. It's amazing how he handles them, and it's a series, again, that I would highly recommend because chef's kiss. Plus the intersections of mythology, it's amazing, and you really grow and care for these characters as you go through the series, and I just find that his writing just grows better with each and every book. And if you've yet to still be convinced, I have done an entire series of reading the Royal Inverse on my main channel. It's also non-spoilery, so if you want to go and view that, then you can do so on there as well. I also find with the Kane Chronicles and Magnus Chase, they're just super cool, like, standalone series that really gives an insight into just the different mythologies that can be written about. I'm very excited for you to potentially read The Ryan Verse, or if you've already read one of Rick Ryden's books, leave a comment in the comment section down below discussing your favourite character, favourite moment, or maybe favourite book in general, if you can actually pick one. And so yeah, that wraps the fifth instalment of Penguin Explorer, and actually the last Penguin Explorer for the year. If you'd like me to return in 2022 and do more episodes of Penguin Explorer, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below, and also I hope you enjoyed this little overview of Rick Ryden's series, or as it's more better known as, The Ryan Verse. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the platform channel in order to see all of the am other amazing videos that are created on here too. And if you want to check out more of what I do, you can find me on YouTube at Fictional Fates, or you can click the link in the description down below to be taken right to my channel. And so yeah, I may be back on here, who knows? But for now, bye platform.